Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Welcome everyone. So, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic today, and that is The Boring Company Autonomous Electric Vehicle. Obviously, this is going to be manufactured via uh, Tesla, and they're going to have some use cases for it as well. But it's kind of a uh, major role is going to be operating in The Boring Company Loop Systems, and I think that this is an important vehicle to talk about as it has kind of fallen by the wayside due to recent events. Not just the pandemic, but also various things that are happening at Tesla, various other product launches, various other kind of changes in the roadmap. Obviously, this is, you know, something that they intend to do, but it's a low priority thing um, from a profit perspective. So, uh, I'm going to talk about delay theories and a solution for inevitably what will, will happen. Um, okay, so let's get into it. So, Tesla's yet to announce its autonomous electric vehicle uh, concept, which I would have thought would have been announced before now. Um, however, uh, very little has been said about this by Elon Musk on Twitter or even the Boeing company. So, so you've just got to imagine that other vehicles are taking... Uh, no priority at this very moment in time. Why is that? Why is Tesla kind of delaying this vehicle if it is important to their overall kind of plan? So the number one reason is insufficient uh, R&D resources, research and development. Ultimately, the R&D teams at Tesla are working very hard on the semi truck and they're working very hard on the, the Tesla uh, kind of compact or Model C, as they like to call it. Uh, and obviously they're working very, very hard on Cybertruck and building out the infrastructure for the various factories that they're building in Berlin and Texas. And all that effort is, is kind of drawing away attention from the AEV. And there's probably very, very few people working on it at this moment in time, if anyone. Um, and, and that's ultimately kind of caused uh, significant delays. Uh, battery shortages and 4680 production delays. As you all know, 4680 is very much in the works. They're getting very, very close to kind of mass producing the 4680 cell. However, there have been some minor teething problems over the last sort of three months or so. And ultimately that's gonna to lead to some quite um, problematic delays for some other vehicles that the Boeing, so that the Tesla are going to be producing. Um, most importantly, obviously the Cybertruck and the Semi-Truck. So um, in addition to that, there's just a general battery shortage in the industry. and adding another vehicle to that list is inevitably not going to be a great idea, hence more delays. Concerns over gross margins, this vehicle will inevitably be produced in small numbers, potentially less than 2,000 per month, maybe even less than 1,500 per month, who knows. Uh, so gross margins on this kind of vehicle are going to be quite small um, in terms of actually selling it onto the Boeing company. Um, but it, its main kind of... Uh, revenue stream is going to be ticket sales uh, from journeys it's going to be more of a kind of a ride uh, uh, sh sh sharing vehicle as it were when you're sharing it with other passengers so concerns over gross margins are, are definitely um, you know there's good reason for all those concerns but um, ultimately they, they can be overcome uh, with scale uh, and good designs uh, FSD safety concerns, obviously lots and lots of articles have been written about full self-driving. Uh, it's not quite there. I thought it was going to be ready by now. Ultimately, uh, you know, very, very cutting edge pieces of technology, such as full self-driving, inevitably take a lot, lot longer than you think they're going to take, even when you make major, major breakthroughs. And I think full self-driving will get there next year. Certainly get close to level four, if not level four, uh, next year. In fact, I'm, I'm going to say on record, I think they will make it level four next year, but it, it, it just takes time, inevitably, with the complexity of the task at hand. At limited factory capacity, ultimately they're addressing that with Texas and Berlin, but still, you know, the focus is going to be on the Model 3, on the Model Y, uh, the semi-truck, Cybertruck, and then, you know, is there any space left over at the end? Um, probably not, if I'm being frank and honest. 
Okay, so this is how I visualize the, the current situation at Tesla. It's, it's a difficult situation, but as a shareholder, I'm, I'm happy that they're doing this and they're kind of pushing themselves and putting themselves on the pressure to do things, but they're certainly developing an absolute monumental number of projects at the same time, um, some of which have been delayed due to you know just how difficult it is to make a battery powder, a semi-truck. Uh, and then obviously you've had issues with Berlin and, and kind of getting approvals. Um, solar roof, uh, solar glass roof wasn't quite as um, successful as it, as it should have been initially at launch, but they are working through problems with that. And I'm assuming they're working on another revision to this particular product and hopefully that will be the uh, the game changer. But uh, as you can see, AEV, this, this plate here is looking like it's about to fall off and certainly uh, Tesla have been putting less uh, priority towards the autonomous electric vehicle potentially being uh, manufactured and, and designed. So those are the situations at the moment. Um, ultimately, a lot of these things are going to get knocked off the list. Certainly, semi truck and cyber truck are going to be knocked off in the next sort of six to nine months. Uh, full self driving might go in the next 12 months. Giga Texas in the next three months. Giga Berlin in the next sort of four to five months. Solar roof, I suspect that most of the problems with that will be resolved in the next sort of six months or so. There's very few problems with that. So the, the product is good, they just need to uh, make it more affordable to, to manufacture and to install. Um, Roadster has been delayed by another year, uh, but it's, it's not going to be a huge major project for Tesla, so it's not exactly a big deal. The main focus will be on the Model C next um, and finishing off the Roadster, and then you'd hope that we get on to the autonomous electric vehicle soon after. Okay, so the Warren Company AEV, this is kind of my visualization of what I think it might look like. So it's got a nice big wide door level access for disabled people with wheelchairs to get in there with strollers um, um, it's going to be nice and long potentially up to 20 to 21 feet long uh, lots of seating seating for potentially 12 to 16 people nice high vehicle potentially up to seven foot tall um, it's going to have uh, motors on each wheel uh, it'll either be a tri motor or quad motor system i believe um, extremely safe uh, doors on both sides, you know, plenty of room to uh, escape in the event of something going wrong. Potentially a door at the back as well. I think having a door at the back makes sense from a safety perspective. Uh, this will be a quality vehicle, high capacity, uh, you know, very, very profitable vehicle once it gets operating and you've built out, you know, a large level of infrastructure. Um, again, Tesla's vehicle priorities are very, very stretched at the moment. And I'm just going to run through where I think things are going to going to go uh, over the next sort of three to four years. So I think that the priority in terms of R&D and kind of developing manufacturing techniques is, is going to be the Cybertruck. Um, ultimately, they have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of reservations for the Cybertruck. This is a, a high profit margin vehicle. Most of these vehicles are spec around, you know, forty five to fifty thousand dollars. So it makes sense to kind of prioritize that one. Semi truck, you know, has a very good gross margin, but they're not going to be producing, you know, 30 40 000 units per year i think it's going to be a half of that so uh, you know that's kind of coming up next um tesla roadster coming towards the end of 2023 might be 2024 um after that i think the tesla compact or the tesla model c will take up almost all of uh, tesla's r d facility and again you know elon musk and the team and the executives will be focusing on this vehicle in a big way in a very, very big way. And I think after that, that is when we see the Boeing Company Autonomous Electric Vehicle. It's a very, very important vehicle for making the economics of the Boeing Company system work. Because, you know, putting four people in a car and running them through a tunnel, it's still got reasonably decent economics, but being able to put 12, potentially 16 people per vehicle with no driver, that's the key. From day one, this will not have a steering wheel. It will be totally open plan. Uh, there'll be no need for a driver and it will you know it'll be at least four or five times safer than you, your average kind of bus driver so it's it's going to be an incredible vehicle with an incredible gross margin super efficient it's going to be a nice lightweight lightweight frame uh, able to operate up to potentially 155 miles per hour but most of the time it'll be in and around 100 to 115 miles per hour 
Okay, so why am I kind of so uh, convinced that this is the way that the Boeing company and Tesla are going to play things? Well, if you have it, the, well, the evidence is right there in front of us. Uh, so part two, uh, master plan is is very explicit in kind of pointing out that they want to build an autonomous electric vehicle. So this is kind of the summary of what I've copied and pasted from this master plan. They want to expand to cover the major forms of terrestrial uh, uh, transport. So when they're talking about that, they're talking about heavy duty trucks and of course, high passenger density urban transport. So you're talking about vehicles that are typically over six and a half tons um, and carry multiple uh, either people or multiple tons of cargo. So we've got the semi truck, which is, you know, one of the first parts. And then the second part is going to be our high passenger density urban transport. With the advent of autonomy, it will probably make sense to shrink the size of buses. So typically a bus is around 50 foot long, certainly in the UK, in and around that kind of number. Uh, I'd imagine that Boeing Company um, autonomous electric vehicles will be in around 20 foot long, maybe slightly longer. Um, but I don't think they even need to have 16 passengers in there. I, I think the economics work beautifully with even as low as 10 passengers, but ideally 12 passengers. So I think 20 foot is more than adequate for that. Traffic congestion would improve due to increased passenger aerial density. So um, you're going to put people in there nice and close together, but you know it's going to be comfortable. No one's going to be standing up. Uh, you're probably going to have slightly more uh, seating space than your typical bus, maybe 15 to 20% larger seats, which will help with comfort. And, and you're not going to be in there for very long, so it, it doesn't really matter too much. But uh, it will certainly be a lot more uh, dense than the current vehicles running in Las Vegas uh, in terms of the Model X and the uh, the Model Y. And then matching acceleration, uh, continuous rear passenger density and matching acceleration and braking to other vehicles. Uh, so, so there's kind of the platooning. I believe vehicles will be platooning at very close distances, potentially less than 10 meters in between vehicles. Um, and that will improve efficiency and also uh, improve the density of the system and will avo avoid the inertial impedance of smooth traffic flow. Well, there'll be no traffic in the tunnels whatsoever, even at junctions um, and, and vehicles will be able to, to get up to high speeds and maintain high speeds 24 hours a day. Um, mm. And true self-driving is approved. You'll be able to summon your Tesla from anywhere. Again, this is mentioned in part two of the master plan. Uh, we know that this is going to be the Tesla Robo Taxi, but also I think that at some point in time the Boeing company will kind of move in that direction as, as well, whereby potentially vehicles will exit the system and come and pick you up. Uh, well, that's a long way into the future, but certainly that is a real possibility very soon. Okay, my theory as to how this will play out. I think that a lot of things are going to happen next year. I think next year is going to be a very big year for Tesla. Not just the things that you know are obvious, but a lot of other things as well. There's going to be some major successes. That's ultimately going to lead to an increase in the stock price. It's also going to increase the confidence of the, the board um, and Elon Musk into the you know, ability to plan ahead and to uh, make, um, make the business a su success. So I think they will then turn back to the master plan and start rolling out the uh, autonomous electric vehicle. So Tesla's R&D teams will begin focusing on an AEV in 2022. That might be in mid 2022 or towards the end of 2022. You know, it depends on the situation at the time. Um, but I believe they'll make a real effort to kind of focus on perfecting the design, which has already been nearly completed apparently, and they will get something, uh, you, you know, out on the roads uh, working potentially before the end of 2022. High volume truck production at Texas Texas delivers bumper profits. So the one part of the master plan will have been kind of uh, uh, chalked off is in the cyber truck is being produced in very high volumes and also in Nevada. I think it's Nevada or is it gonna be Texas after Nevada? They're gonna have the semi truck being produced. So once that's kind of been rolled out in very high volumes and the gross margins are good and the quality of the vehicle is good, and the performance characteristics of the vehicle is good, then everyone's gonna be super happy. And they're gonna be like, hey, what's coming up next? You know, what are you gonna you know, release next? And that is gonna be the AEV. So Tesla achieves 
uh, 2.25 million annual sales in 2023. I think that is very doable. They might be slightly above that. They might be slightly below that. Who knows, but it'll be very, very close to that number. Number four, beautifully designed autonomous electric vehicle is revealed during a launch event. I think there'll be a specific launch event, potentially uh, in one of the new kind of cities that is getting the loop system. Um, and we'll get to see this vehicle and then we'll get to ride in it and they'll announce how and when they're going to be producing this vehicle and the various features of it. Uh, AV test concepts used in Las Vegas, Fort Lauderdale and Austin. So they'll kind of remove, that. they'll have their kind of um, third and fourth revision of the vehicle uh, tested and uh, you know put through its paces in Las Vegas at the convention center, maybe at Resorts World and the Wind Casino. And obviously you have the system in Fort Lauderdale and in Austin linking the airport and the Gigafactory. Uh, and they'll, they'll, they'll test the vehicle uh, in and in with the other vehicles that are in the system and once that proves successful they'll then decide to begin high volume production at Giga Texas in Q2 of 2024 um, and that'll be a very very uh, exciting day but the, the core thing to, to, to remember here is that the Boeing company system can still operate with Model Y and Model X vehicles and Model 3 vehicles in the system it doesn't need to have an autonomous electric vehicle to, to be successful but if you want gross margins uh, well and above a 40 percent then you want to have a 12-seater autonomous electric vehicle purpose built for this particular job okay i hope you agree agreed with my conclusions and my assumptions in this particular episode if you did or if you didn't please tell me in the comments below uh, also consider following me on twitter at boring proof rock on uh, uh, discord as well links in the comments below and please consider supporting me on patreon i would really very much like uh, more patrons to support me and thank you to everyone who's currently supporting me at this very moment in time and those people are these people wonderful wonderful people who continue to support me and i'm ever so thankful that you have all uh, helped me along the way with this channel a uh, big thank you to uh, james uh, dennis as well who upped his patreon contribution as well uh, this last week that was uh, really nice of you James and thank you so much for your continued support okay so as I always say thank you for watching please like and subscribe um, always important that you like the video as that will recommend other videos that are similar to this that may well pique your interest okay guys thank you very much for watching I bid you a good day and remember guys, don't be boring. I will see you on the next one. Thank you and goodbye. Excellent. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all